Hi friends, my name is Angela and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to have a little bit of a bookish catch up. I'm going to share with you my current reads. I'm still going through a little bit of a reading slump and I don't know if it's really a slump or if it's just life, but we'll get into that a bit later. And I thought I'd share with you some authors, some contemporary popular authors that are super duper popular that I have never read for whatever reason. And I wanted to share these authors with you and maybe you can help me push some of them to the top of my TBR. First of all, thanks so much for your feedback on my Halloween recommendation video. That was a lot of fun to put together and I have been watching a lot of the movies that I recommended. Uh, I've watched Death Becomes Her. I watched The Addams Family Values, which I really loved. That's the one with Joan Cusack, who is, you know, seducing Festa. That one's a lot of fun. I also did watch What We Do in the Shadows, and it's been fun kind of revisiting those movies. So I hope you've had a bit of, a bit of fun as well. But the weather here lately has been a little bit gloomy and grey and wet. We've had a bit of rain. So it's been nice. I've just been playing my jazzy Halloween playlist on repeat which has been lovely it's a really really great little playlist as we're coming to the end of 2024 now I'm just starting to think about wrapping up the year I'm thinking about buying some Christmas presents to get a bit of a head start I'm thinking about the year that was which is it in all honesty it has not been a great year personally and I'm looking forward to 2025 so that's kind of where my mind has been for the last for this month and perhaps last month as well and to be honest I think that's maybe that's why reading has taken a little bit of a, a bit of a back seat so I was in a bit of a reading slump in September and I haven't really recovered fully from that I am reading a little bit every day but I don't feel I'm reading as much as I normally would so I don't think it's necessarily that I am burnt out from reading it's just that my life is a little bit there's just a lot of personal stuff going on and reading's just taking a bit of a backseat. But that said, I do have a number of books on the go at the moment. And I think that's part of my problem is I am reading books, but I'm not finishing them right now. That's something I want to try and do. <laughs> I want to finish them. So I am still in the final stages of Frankenstein. I've got just the last couple of chapters to go of this. And I'm so proud of myself for getting this I'm almost there. I will be so proud of myself for finishing this this year. This has been something I've wanted to read for years and I'm really pleased that I have done it. So I encourage you, if you are in a similar boat to me, you've wanted to read it for a while, please go ahead and do it. You would think for having been written for such a long time ago, like 200 years ago, you would think it would be very challenging, but it's written in such an interesting and engaging way. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it's all tidied up at the end. So that one is still on the go. I am also still into A Very British Murder from Lucy Worsley. I think if I could get hold of this on audiobook for free, I would probably listen to this one because Lucy Worsley's voice is just really, you know, engaging. Um, there is actually a documentary that I think she made before she wrote this book, so that might be something I want to watch after reading this. But I'm into it. I'm enjoying it. It's going well. But uh, there's a couple of, you know, there's a couple of heavy little books going on. Another one I started a couple of months ago in the thick of winter was Angela Thurkle's High Rising. I haven't read an Angela Thurkle before and I have, I had high hopes for it. And this is a one book in, like there's, there's a lot of books in this series. So this is the first book uh, it is set around Christmas and I don't know, I guess I did find a little bit of, I mean, I'm only like halfway through it at the moment. It's just very slow and I, I, I feel like maybe I need a little bit more plot to keep me going. So I'm taking, it's, it's taking a while to get through it, but I would like to finish this because the next book, next book is set in spring. I think I would like to try and continue on because it does sound like it's going to be one of those books and series that you, as you get to know the characters and their lives evolve it's going to be quite endearing so that's another one that I have on the go at the moment and then after those 
After Frankenstein and a, a very British murder, I needed something a little bit lighter to break that up. That was getting very, very heavy. So I started re reading The Hazelburn Ladies Motorcycle and Flying Club. And I'm just a couple of chapters in, but so far, so good. This is really lovely. I'm enjoying it. And I really do enjoy the society commentary in here. It starts off set in a hotel and our main character Constance is like she wants to go sit in the hotel and have a meal but she can't because she doesn't have someone to sit with her and it's not proper for a woman to go sit by herself in a hotel little society comments like that fascinate me even though they've just been through a war and everything's been upended and women have been working and things have changed People are trying to go back to the way it was, but women clearly are like, well, hang on, we've changed. Things are not the way it was. So anyway, little society commentary like that really fascinates me. So anyway, she's just gone for her first ride on the motorcycle and uh, she found it exhilarating and I think I can see where this is going to go. So I'm enjoying this one. I needed it to break up Frankenstein and the uh, a perfect, a, a very British murder. This one's going well so far. And another little one I'm picking up here and there is a Countryman's Spring notebook from Adrian Bell. This is one that's been published by Slightly Foxed. So this is one of four books. They've just released the Autumn Notebook. So there's uh, one for summer, spring, winter and autumn. And initially when I came across these, I really wanted to get the winter one. That was the first time I came across it. And I was like, oh, I really, really want to get that one. But the winter one sold out and I couldn't get hold of it. So I thought, oh, well, and I'm not going to go buy the other three to not have the fourth one to complete the set. So I thought, oh, I've missed out on that opportunity. But then they released the quartet as a set and I don't believe that they are the limited edition. I'm still not 100% on how the slightly foxed editions are different to the limited edition sets because they are very similar in how they're produced. But anyway, I managed to get hold of the entire set of the quartet. So I have the autumn notebook, the summer, the winter, and the spring, and they're a beautiful little selection. And the, the Countryman's Notebooks are a, a selection of writing of Adrian Bell that were originally produced as a column in a magazine, a newspaper or a magazine. So it says Bell was commissioned in 1950 by Suffolk and Norfolk's longstanding newspaper, the Eastern Daily Press, to write about his community for his community. These essays are collected for this commission, which led to a tremendous archive of over 1,500,000 1, words and represents the best of local journalism. It is very much about farmers and the local community, and it's really quite beautiful. The spring one, the one I just read recently, I'm just reading a little passage here and there, and there was this beautiful little passage um, about March, which is, of course, spring in the Northern Hemisphere. The prospect of March is usually, as Johnson said of a friend's second marriage, the triumph of hope over experience. I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> so um, I've been enjoying the, the spring one. I've just been picking it up here and there and enjoying a little bit of spring writing country British life. So those are the books that I've currently got on the go. And now I am, I am tempted to pick up another book to try and get out of this reading funk, like maybe something like, by, like uh, Atalanta by Jennifer Saint or I recently got Dusk from Robbie Arnott delivered. That's just come out this month. I'm tempted to pick up that to try and, you know, finish a book because sometimes just finishing a book can kind of pull you out of those slumps. But like I said, I don't think I'm in a slump because I don't want to read. I think it's something else. So maybe I should just stick with what I've got and we'll see where I go. So give me your advice. I'd love to hear from you on that. So let's get into this topic about some authors that I have never read and I'm going to try and stick with more modern contemporary popular authors. I think what kicked this topic off for me was the release of Sally Rooney's latest book Intermezzo because I have not read a Sally Rooney book before and the more I think about it, the more I look into who Sally Rooney is, what she writes about, where she's from. I think it's a big mistake on my part because I love Irish authors, 
I have a big soft spot for Irish authors. Uh, Claire Keegan's one of my favourite authors. There's a, lo a lot of British, Welsh. I, I don't know. I don't know why I haven't done it. I think the reason I haven't is I kind of thought maybe Sally Rooney was focused more towards a young adult audience and that maybe it wouldn't be for me. So I have never read a Sally Rooney book before. When I started this journey of booktube, I thought I was more of a historical fiction person. But the more I've read, the more I've realised that maybe I am more it's a, it's a combination of contemporary and historical literary fiction that is really up, that's really what suits me. And so I feel like Sally Rooney would probably be right up my alley. So I need your opinion. What book should I read first of Sally Rooney's and should I read it right away? Another popular author I have never read before is Sarah J. Mass. I'm not into romanticy fantasy books and the Tar books are everywhere of course but I've never read her books before and I think when I look at them and I see the size of them and the investment of a series that is I, I think the Tar series must be six books deep it's that's an investment if you're going to start one book you you kind of want to be in it for the long haul so I think that might be why I've never really picked it up I mean I have really enjoyed a lot of other young adult fantasy I guess in a sense like I have I did enjoy reading Twilight when it came out I did enjoy reading The Hunger Games so maybe I would enjoy it to a certain I know that it's a very different uh topic but maybe I don't know like I don't know. It's a big investment. It's a big investment of my time and my money and my brain power. So I'm not sure about Sarah J Mass and whether I should just not even do it. Or is there another book of hers that I should read that is not part of the Tar series and maybe there's a standalone book that I could read? If there's one that you know of, please let me know so I could maybe read something of hers to understand what her writing is like. Perhaps one of the most embarrassing admissions is that I have never read a book by Toni Morrison. It has been something that I have wanted to rectify for a long, long, long time. And I I, th I think I have read some poems, maybe in collections of poetry, but I've never read a book. And I honestly think it's because I don't know where to start. There is such a gravitas that is inherent with her writing that I feel like every book comes with some sort of, it's like it's got its own legacy within it. And I just don't know where to start. Like, do I start with... Beloved, do I start with um, The Bluest Eye or Song of Solomon? Or There's so many things. So I have never read a Toni Morrison because I think I'm just paralysed in not knowing where to start. And it's a horrible, horrible admission. I hate to admit it, but I've never read it. Another author I have never read before is I've not read anything by Donna Tartt. And when I was looking into the books that she has written, of course I knew about The Secret History and The Goldfinch, but I was very surprised to see that The Secret History was written in or published in the early 90s. I thought it was much more recent than that. Again, maybe it's because these are books that are quite big. They seem to be an investment in time. And maybe I feel like I'm not Maybe I'm not smart enough for these books that are real, you know, literary greats. Like these are modern classics. These are the modern classics. So I've never read a Donna Tart, and I would like to rectify that, but I don't know. I feel like maybe I should start with the Goldfinch first because there is a bit of a historical element to that. But I could be completely wrong. I don't know what her books are. I don't know a lot about her books, but I think The Goldfinch has a historical element, whereas The Secret History is a little bit different. Another author on my radar that I have never read is R.F. Kuang, and I haven't read Yellowface or Babel, and I... I don't know. I don't know. I think the reason I never read Yellow Face was because everyone else was reading it and I don't like being pushed into reading something because everyone else is. That's probably why I haven't read a lot of these authors is because everyone else is reading them and I don't like to feel like I am following the crowd. So I haven't read any of her books, but they do sound very interesting. They sound very witty and intelligent and like she crosses genres. So maybe I should pick up one of hers as well. 
I don't know about the fantasy ones, but maybe Yellow Face. Enough time has passed from when that went bonkers on BookTok. Another popular author that I have never read that I really, I think this might be one of the ones at the very top of my TBR, is Colson Whitehead. I haven't read any of his books and I really, and con I'm continually drawn to them, in particular Sag Harbour. Something about that book really has drawn me to it. And I think I, I get the feeling that his commentary around these particular times and places in America is going to be very, uh, a little confrontational, very honest and raw. Like I said, with the Hazelburn Ladies Motorcycle and Flying Club, I do like those books that have commentary about the society norms and expectations. And I think that that's what he might have a little bit of that in there. So Colson Whitehead is definitely someone I would like to read. And I mean, I mean, of course, there's like the Underground Railway and there's so many, so many books. And I've got two big hitters at the very, very end. The first one is I have not read Hilary Mantel. And considering my stupefying love of Tudor history, it's it's really such a shame that I have never read Wolf Hall. So I think that is something that will be a 2025 goal will be to read Wolf Hall for the first time. But again, it's one of those things which is like these these novelists have these series and it's an investment it's a big investment in time. I would like to read that series of Wolf Hall. I've just heard nothing but good things about it. There has been I have read some conflicting things where the the way it's written can be a little confusing, that the uh, perspective can be a little bit confusing. But I think some people have suggested that starting off with a little bit of an audio book can help with that. But anyway, it's, I mean, it's just a slight little hurdle to get into it. So I think Wolf Hall will be something I would love to do in 2025 to read that series. And the last one that I, the last author I have not read, uh, a contemporary popular author is Zadie Smith. I haven't read any of Zadie Smith's books and they've been at the top of my list as well. And I don't know why. I really don't know why, but I think White Teeth is something that I would like to read in the near future. I'm kind of tossing up between White Teeth and On Beauty. So if you think one is better than the other as a first Zadie Smith book, I would love to hear your opinion, which one would be better. Those are some authors that I have not read before that is an embarrassing confession. And I feel like I've just kind of hung out all of my dirty laundry for you to see. But I mean, this is something that I've started to learn about reading is that I don't feel I'm not going to be able to read every single book in the world. And at least I, I feel like at least I'm aware, at least I'm aware of these novelists, at least I'm aware of these writers and these books, and I'm, I'm trying to rectify it. And I've got many, many years of reading ahead of me. Reading's just something you've got to take one day at a time. So I would love to hear your recommendations below if there's one that you think I need to be escalating to the top. If you if there is a single book for any of those writers that you think I should, you know, go for straight away, please let me know. I would love to hear your recommendations. And thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next time. Bye.